Good morning. Great to have you guys here today. And I just want to mention a few things going on in this, this week coming up. First of all, Heaven is for Real. This Wednesday night, we're going to be showing that movie at 6.30. Heaven is for Real. It's, it came out, I think, uh, in April, around uh, Easter time. And uh, it really uh, it follows the life of a kid who has a near-death experience and, and travels to heaven. So it, it, it's, a, it's a movie that shares his experiences. Also, next Sunday, we're going to be starting a coincide series with that. And we'll be talking about heaven for the, for the next five weeks uh, after that. And we're going to have, have a Sunday school class led by Beverly back there. She, you, you, you do remember you said yes, right? Okay. <laughs> um, and, and it's really good. It, 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 it uh, follows video with interview with the pastor and, and, and the son and, and things like that. So a video each week and, and things like that, uh, video-led discussion. So it, it's really good. That'll start next week, uh, 9 o'clock on uh, Sunday mornings. And that, that's also five weeks go along as well. Uh, family night meals, we have a sign up for that. And we also have the sign up for the Sunday school class. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can sign up for that. Also coming up here in a few weeks, on September 7th, we're going to have a luau out in the front yard. Uh, so that, that's going to be a lot of fun. It's, we, it's kind of something different. Uh, we, we've done the community party in the past, and it's going to kind of go, go along those same themes, but except this year we want you to wear a Hawaiian shirt, and we'll, we'll have some uh, Hawaiian-themed uh, party stuff as well. So it'll be a great time, and I'll have a lot of fun. We also need some help on the sidewalk coming up here in a couple weekends. Uh, the 22nd and 23rd, we're going to be taking out some of that front sidewalk on Bishop Ave and then laying down new cement just to get it nice and uh, nice and pretty. So uh, with that, I'm going to ask the ushers to please come forward and we'll take your tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, so much. You are a good God and we just want to give back to you during this time. We, we appreciate everything you do for us and this is just a way uh, for us to worship you and say thank you. We praise you in your name. Amen. Before we go into the time of the sermon, I'm going to first uh, release the kids up to grade six and also ask my friend Johnny to come on up here. Uh, he's, we, we're going to show you a video and then, do you want to talk first or do you want to show the video first? You, you want to talk first? Okay. All right. So Johnny's going to sh show, tell you what you're going to see in the video and then we'll show you, show you the video. So. Go ahead. Um, I'm John. Um, I've been going to this church since I was that tall, four foot two ago. Um, but uh, this last summer, I went to a church camp in Florida, and I had the chance to be baptized in the ocean. And it was a great experience for me. And thank you. <laughs> and um, I mean, not that many people get to really get baptized in the ocean from Iowa anyway. <laughs> if you live in Florida, you're going to get baptized in the ocean. But uh, I really think that that experience changed my life and it brought me closer to God. Awesome. So, so what we do when people are baptized here, we give them a t-shirt that says made new. I was supposed to give this to him a few months ago, but he backed out. That's okay because God had another plan and we're okay with that. So, so uh, check out this video. Uh, and you'll get to see John baptized, even though it was hundreds and maybe even a thousand miles away. I don't know. Check it out. So, thanks, John. Let's go, John! John! If you're interested in baptism, this is something we do as a sign of our, our faith in Jesus. Once we have expressed our faith and, and believed in him, that we, we, we get baptized just to, to show our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, our, our, our newfound faith. So if you're interested in that, uh, please let me know, 
Uh, we're always willing to have another uh, baptism service, so that, that's really cool. I'm glad that even though uh, it was done in Florida, we can still share with, it, uh, with him in that here. Uh, this morning, we are going to be in Philippians, and as you uh, turn to uh, chapter 4, just want to mention, uh, if, if you're able to, there's going to be a group of us uh, going out and passing out flyers for the, the movie, uh, just kind of door-to-door and just hand, invite some people uh, to, to the movie on Wednesday. We're going to do that right after the service, so if you're interested, uh, please just hang out and uh, uh, show up in the uh, fellowship hall. We're going to read chapter 4, verse 2, through the end of the chapter. We're going to end our uh, series in Philippians today, so, uh, and next week we'll pick up with Heaven is for Real series, so we'll start with verse 2, and if you want to join me on the odd verses, that would be great. <clears throat> I plead with Eudia, and I plead with Syntec to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the earthly days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out with the Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what I may have credited to your account. I have received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all the saints in this Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Christ Jesus be with you, Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words, these words that you know we read through in the last seven weeks. We we read through the whole book of Philippians. That's, that's an amazing thing. There's so much wisdom, so much knowledge in this book that I, I pray that it, it transforms us. It, it, it is one of those things that we can talk about thankfulness and talk about peace, but if it doesn't change us, then, then, then why have we done it? We want you to change us. We want you to, to work in our lives. We want, we want you to, to, to make us new. Lord, we, we love you, we praise you. In your name, amen. Like I said, we, this has been seven weeks of a journey, and, and I'm going to start out with Philippians 4.4. 4. This is one of those things that, as actually we read earlier in the book, rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. It's, 
one of the most amazing passages in, in, in this uh, chapter that we read today. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. You know, sometimes it is easy to do this when things are good. When things are going our way, it's easy to rejoice in the Lord. Sometimes we even forget sometimes to rejoice in the Lord because things are going so well. But it is easy to rejoice in the Lord when things are good. But what about in the hard times? What about times in struggle and strife? Is, is it easy to rejoice in the Lord, especially always? It's, it, that's the key word of this verse, always. That's, that's not easy at all. Always. Rejoice in the Lord, always. So every day as I, I look at this passage and, and, and as I try to figure out, what, how, how do we do this always? You know, that, that, that's, that's not eas easily done. In verse 6, it kind of gives us our first answer of how to rejoice in the Lord. It says, Do not be anxious, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now, when I ask a question and I get an answer, I do not want an answer saying, Do not. You know, that, that's, that's hard. When, when, when you get the do not stuff, tell me things to do, not do not. That, that is always Hard. It's like a parent telling a kid, do not do this. Well, that's the first thing I want to do, right? The exact thing they tell me not to do. But in this case, he, here's Paul saying, don't be anxious. Now, this is in everything. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request before God. Now, I might remind you that Paul's in prison. He, he's in house arrest and he can't leave the place. He's, he's under some struggling times. He, he can't do the things that he wants to do. But he's telling us to not be anxious. He's not worried about his situation. So he's telling us to not be worried about whatever situation we are in. You know, it's interesting. Anxiety is crazy. If, if you know anything about anxiety disorders, you would know 40 million people in the U.S. ages 18 and older have some sort of anxiety disorder. That's amazing. 40 million. That's 18% of all adults have some sort of anxiety disorder. Wow. We're, we're stressed. We're anxious. There, there's a lot of things going on in our lives that are causing something that we had to make a disorder for it. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff going on in our minds, in our heads. Anxiety disorders are highly treatable, but only a third of the people receive some sort of treatment, going to see a psychiatrist or, or, or getting on some sort of medication for it. Only a third of the people are receiving treatment. So there's tons of people being you know, worried about all these things going on in their lives, plus the people that aren't just you know, diagnosed with it. There's tons of people that are just anxious about things going on in our daily normal lives you know Jenny and I a few years ago we ended our our jobs in New York and we moved to Indianapolis I was about to start seminary and 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 I thought things were great things were going well and and here we are about two weeks before we we moved down to Indianapolis we're living with our parents which probably had something to do with what was going on but it, it was we were looking for jobs we were looking for a place and all these things just kind of added up and and we were driving to Kokomo one day and and I just kind of freaked out like just blew up like everything just came out at once I had trouble breathing and and Jenny's like pull over I'm like oh okay you like like it just kind of woke me up like here I am, like, hardly able to breathe, maybe even crying. I can't remember all the details because I was having an attack, an anxiety attack. You know, if you've ever experienced an anxiety attack, like, you're, you're not in control. And Jenny knew I wasn't in control, and she didn't want somebody not in control driving her vehicle. You know, like, she, she, she wanted me to stop. If you've ever had an anxiety attack, and, and I've never had one since, it was, this was the one and only time that, that I've had this experience but it just was overwhelming and everything just kind of came out at me at once. It was just struggle. You know, we're moving to a place that I'd never been, 
been other than just kind of going down for the weekend or something like that. And there was a lot of people there. I'm a small town guy, kind of like a lot of you people are. You know, moving to Indianapolis was a little overwhelming. I didn't realize how overwhelming it was. It was, it was a struggle. But the one thing like, I was forgetting to do, even though I was praying, I wasn't being thankful for what I had. I was just focusing on the issues at hand. I was thinking about the job that I was still needing to, to provide for, for Jenny and I. I was still thinking about the place we needed to find so I could get out of Jenny's parents' house. As awesome as they are, you don't want to live with your in-laws for a long period of time. Like, you just got to get out. It was causing a lot of anxiety. You know, it says here, Thanksgiving is, is needed. When, when, when we find the things that we have in our life that we can be thankful for, that's an amazing thing. When we can focus on the good things going on, even, even though there might be a lot of bad things going on in our life, but, but when, we, when, we, when we find the hope and when we find the peace that, that God can give us in, in, in the struggles, that's an amazing thing. You know, that's the second point. Peace of God transcends understanding. This, this is taken right from the scripture. Peace of God transcends understanding. This is something that we can't understand even. It changes our understanding. It changes our hearts. It changes our minds in a way that is unbelievable. And we can't even understand it ourselves. It will guard our hearts. It will guard our minds. Peace is the opposite of anxiety. The opposite of worry. It doesn't mean your situation changes. It means you have a different view on it because you have this bigger hope. You have this bigger view of, of, of this world and, and of your God. Charles Stanley is one of those guys. Charles Stanley, you guys might recognize that name. He's, he's a pastor that is very close to retirement. I can't imagine how close to, to retirement. He's, he's probably actually past the age of normal retirement. But he, he's been a pastor in Atlanta for years. And some of you follow him on TV. That's, that's how big he is. He, he's on stations all over the United States, all over the world, preaching the gospel because he, he's kind of a big guy. He's, he, people know his name. And, and he's been through some rough situations. He, he actually has a wife with mental illness, too. I'm not sure. I, I think it might have been bipolar. But, she, you know, so, so he was living with someone that, that was going through a lot of these struggles, too. And, and, and eventually, the, their marriage collapsed. She left him. And, and, and here's this prominent preacher that everybody knows that, that just went through a divorce. And, and, and he's crumbling. And during this time, he, he wrote this sermon called The Peace of God. And he wrote kind of this transcript, and, and I found it online. And I just want to read a portion of that to you today. It says, True peace does not merely dull our pain. A person who has genuine godly peace can endure an avalanche of hardship and difficulty and still enjoy an inner peace that surpasses all human understanding. Why? Because it does not come from pleasant circumstances, nice events, or good things others may do for us. Instead, it is based on the fact that the spirit of our holy, omnipotent, and never-changing God lives within us. Does enjoying God's perfect peace mean that you'll never feel the effects of the storms raging around you? Hardly. But his peace is complete, adequate, and sufficient for anything we face. And that just hit like a ton of bricks. His peace is sufficient for anything we face. We still can't understand it. It transcends our understanding. We still can't understand it. But it's there because he's with us. And... and, and and it's going with us. It changes your thought life. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That doesn't mean you forget about what's going on in your life. That doesn't mean you only think about the good things and you try to like push the back burner, all these, these rough things that are going on. But it means that God has other things in store for you. There, there's good things, too, along with, with the bad. And when you work through it, when, when, when you put your hope and trust in God, it, it can do amazing, amazing things. It doesn't happen all at once, though. It, it takes practice. But if you practice them, the peace of God will be with you. What a person allows to occupy their mind will sooner or later determine 
the person they become. There's this video that, that I found this week that if, if we just remember these words, it, it would give us a lot more peace. So check out this video. I'm not sure how many times it says God loves you, but did you get the point? When, when, when God loves you, you can have peace. Because nothing else really matters because God loves you. And, and he has a plan for you. He understands you. All, all those different words that, that Billy Graham... I, oh, man. I wish I could preach like Billy Graham. Uh, but just these words that, that can bring peace. If, you, if you're going through a tough time, open up the Bible and see, say, say what, read what God says about you. God loves you. That can bring peace. It's an amazing thing. This bring... This peace can bring contentment. Learn to be content in every situation, well-fed or hungry, living in plenty or want. This is, this is something that Paul was talking about to the Philippians. He said, we can be content because we have God. You know, he, he said, whether you're hungry or you're in want, some, something that you're lacking. You know, that, that's, that's something that he knew about. He, he was hungry at times. Or he, he was well fed at times. It didn't matter. He still had peace. He, he was content. He living in plenty or in want. Whether he had enough money in his pocket to be able to buy a meal the next, the next meal. He, he was okay. He was content. This is one of the things in, in, in Philippians here. He was talking mostly about money. He, it talks about how when no other church would support him, the church in Philippi, Philippi would support him. This, this was one of those things that he was saying, thank you. Thank you for supporting me in the past. I don't necessarily need that support anymore because I have so much support that, that I have more than I need. And he was saying thank you to the Philippians. And he just wanted to say the Philippians, learn to be content. Learn, learn to be okay with the things that God is trying to teach you at those specific times. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. That's, that's one of those things. Whether you're doing good or doing bad, you can still rejoice in the Lord. The thing is, if you don't have the Lord... It's hard to be content. If, if it's, it's hard to be okay with what you have don't, or, or not think about the things you don't have if you don't have the Lord. I've, I've seen many people, friends, family members, trying to find contentment in these things that don't bring contentment, but they're trying to fill this void that will never be filled with, with material things. It doesn't matter if, through a car or or house or, or family. You can't find contentment in any of those things unless you have Christ. There are some things, though, not to be okay with, not to be content with. Relationship with Christ, we can always have more. We can always understand Jesus more. We can always have more people at Heartland here. We can have more people understanding who Jesus is. I'm never going to be content with the amount of people that don't know Jesus and are, are, are sitting in their living rooms this morning and, and just getting ready to watch a ball game or whatever. I, I want to see people come to know Jesus and I'm never going to be content with uh, the, the amount of people. As long as there's one more person out there, we, we got more work to do. The cool thing is, Jesus knows that. And in verse 13 it says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. That right there is the pinnacle. We've, we've been kind of going to, to through, through Philippians, and this is kind of the pinnacle. You know, whether we're anxious, whether, whether we're struggling, whether, whatever it might be, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Can you say that with me this morning? I can, give, do, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. One more time. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. The One of the biggest things to, to transcend our understanding, peace of God, cha change our hearts, change our minds, is, is, is really repetition. <laughs> knowing that God will do this stuff, repeating these things in your heart, knowing that it'll change our hearts and our minds to know that God will take care of us 
through it all and that he can do everything. He can do everything. He'll give us the strength to get through it. But we need Christ. We need Christ to get through it. It says, verse 19, my God will meet all your needs. Every need. All your needs. You know, sometimes it's hard to speak in absolutes, but this is pretty cool. Everything. All. Those are absolutes. And God will take care of those. You know, the last few weeks we've covered Philippians from, from the beginning to the end. It talks about thanksgiving. It talks about uh, Paul being in chains. And he can still be content. He can still be okay with the situation that he's in. We talked about in chapter 2 where Pastor Curtis talked about humility and how he humbled himself even to, to death on a cross. That's, that's an amazing thing. Because if you can be content and not be anxious in those circumstances, that's something I want to be a part of. You know, then, then we talked about shining like stars, how, how we look out for others before our own interests, how we can also have confidence in Christ. We, we take that confidence in ourselves and we take it off and put on the confidence in Christ. And then last week we talked about pressing on. Whether whatever it is that we, we struggle with, we can, we can continue through. And this week we talked about not being anxious, about letting the God, uh, peace of God transcend our understanding. But the one thing, the one thing that we need to know if we're talking about true joy is true joy can only be found in Christ. True joy can only be found in Christ. You know, there's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of pain out there. You know, I mentioned in my prayer, and maybe you didn't catch it, but Rick was placed on hospice this week. That's, that's tough. He's normally sitting where, where Curtis is today. But he, you know, he's struggling. But he has peace. He, he's okay. He's confident in his Savior. There might be a little anxiety there. That's, that's normal. That's okay. But, but he lets the, lets the peace of God transcend his understanding. And he knows he, the confidence that he has in that. I want to ask the worship team to come forward. We're going to sing the song. And I know there's a lot of things going on in your lives, in your hearts, in, in your minds. And, and if you have those things going on, whatever those struggles are, may, maybe uh, it's one of those things that you want to come to the altar. You know, we have these pieces of wood here that really mean nothing except for the fact that people meet God at, at, at the altar. It, the only, just, to, to, just to get a place where they can just get away from everything, a symbol that says, I need to meet with God right now. And maybe you want to do that during this song. Maybe, maybe you, you're, you're struggling. Maybe you have something that is just causing so much anxiety in you. Maybe it's hard to see God's peace. Maybe you just want to do that at the altar this morning. I'll, I'll, I'll more than willingly pray with you if you, you want me to. Um, but if you want to pray during this song, uh, please do. Let us pray. Lord, we give everything to you. We give our lives, we give our hearts, we give our minds so you can transcend our understanding. Because these are things that we don't understand. Why we're going through and why uh, these Christians in Iraq are being persecuted. Why uh, all, all the Ebola is being spread and taken uh, hundreds of lives in Sierra Leone, in Liberia. Sierra Leone, you know, one of those countries that even we, we've talked about, you know, a few months ago as, as, as we raised money to, to support a pineapple farm there. You know, this, this is one of those things that is close to our heart because there's people there that are dying. And, 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 and we don't understand why, but we, we can still have your peace we can still have your peace transcend our understanding. So we give everything to you right now. Do your will. We praise you in your name. Amen.
Just one last thing that I want to do before I dismiss you, and I'm going to ask all you guys up there, Les, Tracy, Anthony, to come up here. This is not something I'm celebrating. They, they might be happy about it. Um, maybe you've heard, but they're moving to Texas. Uh, they've been here just a little over two years. Kind of, they, they came the same time Jenny and I came. Uh, so so they, they transitioned just as well as Jenny and I um, and Teddy. Uh, we're going to miss them. They're, they're leaving Thursday, right? Heading out on the road. So uh, I'd like to ask uh, those of you that have, have had uh, just a close connection with them over the last couple years come up, uh, lay hands on them, and we'll pray, pray over them uh, before they take off. Uh, uh, it's a sad day, uh, but we, we rejoice with them because Tracy's going to be closer to family. Uh, you're, you're actually moving into your dad's house, right? So it'll, it'll be good. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these guys that have been so uh, uh, meaningful to us uh, over the past couple years. We just ask that you bless their journey, uh, make and mold them into the people that you want them to become. Uh, we, we are just so grateful that you brought us uh, in their past for a couple years. Um, you were able to allow me to uh, uh, be part of their, their marriage ceremony. And, and for that, I'm grateful to, to be uh, with Anthony and, and, and that through youth group uh, to, to see uh, the, these guys become leaders in their own right. And we're so thankful. And they, I know Alex isn't here today uh, just visiting with his mother to just be with him, uh, help them to transition into the new schools, help them make friends, and, and just have a great time uh, being closer uh, to Tracy's family, Lord. We, we praise you, we glorify you through it all in your name, amen.